Imagine an empire so vast, so wealthy and so powerful, it could rival any kingdom of its time. This was the Mali Empire, the beacon of West African civilization. Situated in the heart of West Africa, the Mali Empire was a colossus that spanned from the Atlantic coastline to the Sahara Desert, encompassing modern-day Mali, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Mauritania, and even parts of Niger and Burkina Faso. This expansive realm was not the result of happenstance but the visionary leadership of a legendary warrior king, Sundiata Keita. Born into exile after his father was vanquished by the Susu people, Sundiata's early life was a tale of obscurity and hardship. Yet destiny had grand plans for him. He returned to his ancestral land Kangaba, where he led a victorious campaign against the Susu in the Battle of Kirina in 1235. This victory marked the birth of the Mali Empire, with Sundiata as its first Mansa, or Emperor. The Mali Empire's strategic location, straddling the trade routes between the gold mines of West Africa and the markets of North Africa and the Mediterranean, fueled its rapid expansion. Sundiata's reign saw the incorporation of the gold-rich city of Timbuktu and the neighboring kingdoms of Ghana and Mema. The empire controlled the flow of gold, salt and other precious commodities, amassing wealth that was simply unimaginable. This immense prosperity however was not just about material wealth, it was about the flourishing of culture, learning, and innovation. The cities of the Mali Empire, especially Timbuktu, became vibrant hubs of Islamic scholarship, attracting intellectuals and artists from far and wide. The empire's architectural marvels, like the Great Mosque of Jenna still in use today, bear testament to this cultural renaissance. Indeed, the Mali Empire was a testament to the grandeur and prosperity that Africa could achieve. Its rise and expansion under Sundiata Keita's leadership laid the foundation for a golden age of African civilization, an age where the Mali Empire stood as an unrivaled beacon of power, wealth, and cultural sophistication. The rise of the Mali Empire is a story of resilience, strategic foresight, and military prowess. At the heart of this tale is Sundiata Keita, the empire's founder and first Mansa, or emperor. Born into a life of exile after his father, the king of Kangaba, was defeated by the Susu people, Sundiata's early life was marked by obscurity, yet destiny had grand plans for him. As he grew, Sundiata honed his skills as a warrior and a leader. The time came when he could no longer ignore the call of his birthright. He returned to Kangaba, rallied his forces and took on the Susu people in the now infamous Battle of Karina in 1235. Emerging victorious, Sundiata was crowned Mansa, setting the stage for a new chapter in West African history. Under Sundiata's rule the Mali Empire began to expand at a rapid pace. His military strategies led to the successful conquest of neighboring kingdoms, including the once powerful Ghana and Mima. Sundiata's vision however was not limited to military conquests. He recognized the value of economic power. With shrewd diplomacy and strategic alliances, he brought the gold-rich city of Timbuktu under his control making the Mali Empire a vital hub in the Trans-Saharan trade network. Sundiata's reign was not only marked by territorial expansion, but also by cultural and economic growth. He laid the foundations for a prosperous empire that valued trade, agriculture, and the arts. His reign saw the introduction of efficient administrative systems, agricultural reforms, and a boost in cultural exchange, enriching the empire further. By the time of Sundiata's death in 1255, the Mali Empire had transformed into West Africa's most powerful kingdom. Under his leadership, the empire had expanded its borders, enriched its coffers, and established itself as a significant cultural and economic force. Under Sundiata the empire flourished, reaching unprecedented heights of power and influence. His rule marked the beginning of a golden era, a testament to his visionary leadership and the indomitable spirit of the people of Mali. The reign of Mansa Musa brought the Mali Empire to the attention of the world. A statement that resonates with truth as we delve into one of the most fascinating tales of the Mali Empire. The tale of a pilgrimage that echoed through the corridors of history and projected the Mali Empire onto the world stage. Mansa Musa, the ruler of the Mali Empire from 1312 to 1337, was a man of deep faith, a devout Muslim and his devotion led him to undertake a journey of faith, a pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca in 1324. But this was no ordinary journey. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was an epic spectacle, a journey that was as grand as it was holy. Accompanied by a large entourage, Mansa Musa embarked on his journey with an astounding amount of gold. 
The gold was not merely a symbol of his vast wealth, but also a testament to the Mali Empire's prosperity. It was a spectacle that drew the eyes of the world. The sheer magnitude of his wealth left a lasting impression on the regions he passed through, leading to increased interest in the Mali Empire. But the impact of Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was not merely confined to the display of wealth. The pilgrimage served as a vehicle to spread the fame of the Mali Empire far and wide. It was a journey that echoed through the annals of history, etching the name of the Mali Empire in the minds of people across different continents. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was not just a personal journey of faith. It was a voyage that transported the Mali Empire from the realms of West Africa to the global stage. It was a testament to the empire's wealth, its devotion to faith, and its indomitable spirit. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage not only showcased the empire's wealth but also cemented its place in world history. And so, the tale of Mansa Musa, his pilgrimage and the Mali Empire continues to resonate. A tale of faith, wealth and an empire that left an indelible mark on the world. Every empire, no matter how mighty, faces a decline, the Mali Empire was no exception. As the 15th century dawned, the Mali Empire began to crumble from within, succumbing to a combination of internal and external pressures that would ultimately lead to its downfall. Internal political instability loomed large. Power struggles within the royal court were common, and the empire was frequently embroiled in civil wars. The Mansa, once a figure of unchallenged authority, was gradually losing grip on the vast territories. The once unified empire began to fragment into smaller independent states, each vying for power and control. The rise of the Songhai Empire, a formidable power in the east, added to the Mali Empire's woes. The Songhai, once subjects of the Mali Empire, grew in strength and ambition. Under the leadership of Soni Ali, they defied their former masters, seizing key territories including the gold-rich city of Timbuktu. The loss of these lands was a heavy blow to the Mali Empire's economy and prestige. The transatlantic slave trade also played a significant role in the decline of the Mali Empire. As European powers established trading posts along the West African coast, they began to exploit the region's people and resources. The slave trade disrupted traditional social structures, causing widespread devastation and contributing to the empire's instability. By the end of the 16th century, the Mali Empire had lost its status as a dominant power in West Africa. In 1591, the Songhai Empire, now the dominant power in the region, launched a successful military campaign against the Mali Empire, marking the end of its reign. Despite its decline, the Mali Empire's influence remained etched in the annals of history. Its legacy lived on in the form of its architectural grandeur, its contributions to Islamic scholarship, and the vibrant cultural traditions it bestowed upon succeeding generations. Even in decline, the Mali Empire's story is one of resilience and endurance, a testament to the indomitable spirit of its people. The Mali Empire may have fallen, but its legacy lives on. A profound testament to the enduring influence of this mighty empire can be found in its cultural, architectural and intellectual contributions that continue to shape the world today. In the heart of the empire lay the city of Timbuktu, a place of legend. It was a vibrant hub of trade, a beacon of Islamic learning, and a magnet for scholars from around the world. Here, intellectual curiosity was nurtured and celebrated. The city's libraries housed thousands of manuscripts, preserving invaluable knowledge on topics as diverse as astronomy, medicine, poetry, and law. Timbuktu, even in the wake of the empire's fall, remains a symbol of Africa's rich intellectual tradition. Architecturally, the Mali Empire left an indelible mark on the landscape of West Africa. The Great Mosque of Jenna, a marvel of Sudano-Sahelian architecture, stands as a testament to the empire's architectural prowess. Built of mud brick and towering towards the sky, it's a monument to the creative genius of the Malian people, a testament to their ingenuity, and a symbol of their deep-rooted Islamic faith. Music and literature also flourished under the Mali Empire. The empire's griots or storytellers were custodians of history, spinning tales of heroic kings and epic battles, their words immortalized in song. These oral traditions have been passed down through generations, their rhythms and melodies echoing the spirit of the Mali Empire keeping its memory alive in the hearts of the people. And let's not forget the empire's economic legacy. The Mali Empire controlled important trade routes, connecting West Africa with North Africa and the Mediterranean world. It was known for its wealth, derived largely from the gold trade, 
setting a precedent for economic prosperity in the region. The Mali Empire's influence transcends time, its legacy a testament to Africa's rich cultural and historical heritage. This was an empire that not only ruled, but also inspired, leaving a lasting imprint on the world long after its decline.